Hello, Alien Sintelair here, and in this technical video, we're going to take a look at RESTful Call versus WebSocket. So Mesh Central has a real-time user interface, and a lot of the usages of Mesh Central are real-time, remote desktop, remote terminal, remote files, and so on. So you, you want not only the, those usages to be real-time, but also all of the control information, the fact that the devices are coming online and offline, you want everything to be real-time. So this, the technology of choice for Mesh Central is to use WebSockets instead of RESTful calls. So let's take a look a little bit at what that entails. So I have just a few slides here to illustrate a few points. Normally, websites uh, would typically do RESTful calls to a server. So what you do is you make a HTTP POST or HTTP GET, and you say, please give me this information, and the server responds. Now, this is great for simple applications, and you can do a lot of these requests and responses. But if you want to do something in real time, this is not really adequate, because all the requests are coming in from always initiated from the web page. And so you can kind of hack uh, answers or events back from the server, but it's not really ideal. Also, there's a, a setup cost every time you make an HTTP post. There's like headers and stuff. So there's a overhead um, compression. You can do compression, but because of the extra overhead of doing the HTTP post and the, the header every time, the compression is not that great. And, uh, and you need to re kind of renegotiate the compression on every single call. So there's a whole bunch of problems with this. Now, the, a lot of people ask me, does Mesh Central support a RESTful API? And right now it doesn't, I'm open to it, I may add one in the future, but, but the primary API for Mesh Central is WebSocket based. And so there's a lot of people who have tools for doing RESTful calls, and that I understand is very convenient, but uh, after you do that for a little bit, you quickly realize that WebSocket is a much more powerful uh, interface because now you're interacting with Mesh Central in a bi-directional, two-way, real-time uh, way. So a little more complicated upfront to deal with, but the payback is very, very good. So WebSocket, basically the web page will load, and once it's loaded, it will establish a single WebSocket to the server. So that has a whole bunch of benefits. Uh, you have the commands are sent over WebSocket. They are uh, split by the WebSocket protocol. So on the other side, the server will receive each command separately. Uh, so that's really nice. It's not a stream like TCP. Compression is negotiated only once. So then you, know, you can run a lot of data through and uh, the compression is very efficient. You can do out of order calls. So you can make, you can ask for different things and receive the answers in a different order. This is nice if you're sending like one big request and then a small request after it. After it. The Mesh Central server can asynchronously launch to the database those two requests. The small one will answer first, and you can get the, small, the answer to the small one uh, first before the big one uh, second. So basically, depending on the workload of the server, you may get uh, the, the responses in a different order than you send them. That is actually great for performance. The other nice thing about WebSockets is that you get what I like to call a carrier. Uh, it's a ham radio kind of thing, but basically the idea is that as long as the user's connected, this WebSocket is up. And so uh, as soon as the, the user disconnects, the WebSocket drops. And so the Mesh Central server has an idea of what users are currently connected right now. So if you're doing HTTP you know, RESTful calls, you can make calls, but in between the calls, you're like, there's dead air. You don't know if the user's ever gonna come back, that he closed the session, he can close at any time. So essentially, you would have to kind of time, time it out or something like that. But with WebSocket, the nice thing is when you close the tab, the WebSocket drops, and the server knows immediately that user is no longer online. And so you see it in the web interface of Mesh Central. You can see in real time what users are uh, currently connected to the server. 
and if, if somebody closes their browser, you see it immediately. There's no timeout or things like that. And that's because of the WebSocket protocol. So I want to just take a look at, just in practice, a few, an example of how this works. I have my trusty developer Mesh Central server here. I have the web page there. And of course, I can go in more tools here in Firefox and open the developer tools. And in the developer tools, I can go to network and reload the web page. And this is this, let's see here, HTML. Is that right? All, there it goes. So I'm going to take a look at all the requests. And so as you load the web page, you see all these requests being made to the server. And these are equivalent to RESTful calls. Obviously, the, the, these are for HTTP and libraries and things. But these are all calls that you, the, the browser makes and get an, answers back, an answer back from the server. Now, if you look at WebSocket here, you'll see that there's currently one WebSocket active. And you can look at requests, uh, responses, and you can see all the WebSocket traffic that's being, uh, that's being sent or received uh, on this channel. So uh, you can debug in Firefox and Chrome and browsers. You can debug both uh, RESTful calls and WebSocket calls pretty fairly easily. So you can use this, or I'm, gonna close, I'm uh, going to go to console here. And one thing you can do is add trace equal one as a URI parameter. And that will tell the application, the web application, to print out everything it sends and receives on the WebSocket channel. So if you want to program against the WebSocket API of Mesh Central, one easy way to get started is to simply mimic what the web application here does. Uh, that's also what Mesh Command does, uh, or Mesh Control does, if you uh, are familiar with that tool. So for example here, uh, sending uh, a request for user groups and sending a few other things and then receive this information and this information. And then you see that the user group request was only fulfilled here, right? And so wh what happened here is because you, you're sending commands on the WebSocket channel and you're receiving commands out, completely out of order. Also, what's nice is you're seeing uh, traffic keep going, you know, keeps uh, receiving here in real time. So for example, if I click on a device and I change the name and I say, okay, you'll see that um, it sent a change device here requesting that the, this node change to this name. And then you'll get an event back saying, okay, you know, the, we stored it in the database. We are confirming that's the name of the, uh, the new name for that device and that it changes on the web page. So if I do that again, you say OK, and you see the new commands there. So it's fairly easy, um, but it is extremely powerful, much, much more powerful than, uh, than uh, RESTful APIs. So basically, this is why Mesh Central is all WebSocket-based and not RESTful-based. So I want to go back to the PowerPoint slide, just review of the benefits of WebSockets. Um, Obviously, the, the, before I get into this, the benefit of RESTful Call is probably that there's a lot of programmers and tool support for it, developer support for it. But the benefits of WebSocket are low overhead, especially when you're talking about lots of messages, uh, asynchronous events where, that you can receive, out of order messages, ex extremely good compression if you're, um, because you're negotiating it only once, and you have a presence indication. So as long as the WebSocket is alive, you know that that user's uh, browser tab is open and uh, listening. So basically, that's a quick recap of RESTful versus WebSocket and why WebSocket is the preferred choice for Mesh Central. Hopefully you like that. Thank you very much.